Hello everybody, this video is on Maxwell's contribution to electromagnetism and the production and propagation of electromagnetic waves. James Maxwell was a Scottish physicist who made several contributions to the field of electromagnetism. His contributions were partly inspired by the work of Michael Faraday. Maxwell's first theory was a unification of electric and magnetic fields. Recall Faraday's law of induction. A changing magnetic field or magnetic flux will induce an EMF in a conductor. And this EMF will cause electrons to flow, which is what we call current. Since electrons are negative charges, when there's an EMF, there'll be also a moving electric field because charges are accompanied by electric fields. When you have a negative charge, the field will be going towards the negative charge. So if this negative charge, such as an electron, is moving in a certain direction with a velocity, then we say that the electric field is also moving. We also know that a current carrying conductor will produce its own magnetic field. In other words, moving charges, which is what current is, will also produce a magnetic field. In the example that we saw earlier, when you have a negative charge, and if we make this charge move in a certain direction, not only does it carry the electric field with it, the moving charge will also produce a magnetic field. James Maxwell proposed that the concept of electric fields and magnetic fields should be unified into one entity because they always coexist. Maxwell's second theory was his prediction of electromagnetic waves, EM waves for short. In addition to the unification of electric fields and magnetic fields, Maxwell further proposed that a changing electric field and a changing magnetic field will mutually produce each other. He used an oscillating charge to demonstrate this idea. When a charge oscillates, in other words, moving back and forth, its changing position will produce a moving electric field, as we discussed. And this moving charge will also produce a magnetic field. If the charge is moving with constant velocity or speed, this will produce a constant magnetic field. Now, if this charge is moving back and forth or oscillating with acceleration, then the magnetic field produced will also be changing in magnitude. As the charge is moving faster, the magnitude of the magnetic field will also increase and vice versa. So when a charge oscillates back and forth with acceleration, it will be able to produce a changing electric field and a changing magnetic field. When there's a changing magnetic field, by Faraday's of induction, there will be an EMF, which gives rise to an accelerating charge, and the accelerating charge will produce a moving electric field. Hopefully what you can see by now is that when we have a charge that oscillates back and forth with acceleration, it will be able to produce not only a changing electric field, but also a changing magnetic field. And these two fields, when they are changing, they are able to produce one another. The moving electric field will produce a changing magnetic field if the charge has acceleration. And by Faraday's law, the changing magnetic field will then feed back and produce a moving electric field. Maxwell said that when such an oscillating charge is fired in a certain direction, it will carry the associated electric field and magnetic field with it, leading to the production of what we now understand as electromagnetic wave. In this wave model, the electric field and the magnetic fields are changing in magnitude but always remain perpendicular and in phase. The term in phase refers to the fact that when the electric field is at its maximum magnitude, so is the magnetic field. When the electric field is zero in magnitude, so is the magnetic field. This ultimately led to the development of a new model of light, the electromagnetic transverse wave model of light. 
Maxwell's third contribution was this calculation of the speed of the so-called electromagnetic waves that he predicted. Maxwell's equations were used to calculate the speed. The equations is simplified into c equals the 1 over the square root of mu naughts and epsilon naughts. Mu naughts is the magnetic permeability constant, which is 4 pi times by 10 to the power of 7, and epsilon naughts is the electric permittivity constant, which is 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. When Maxwell substituted these numbers in, he obtained a number of approximately 2.998 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. This was his prediction of the speed of electromagnetic waves. At this time, he also noticed that the result was very close to the light speed. And this is where he further predicted that light perhaps is a type of electromagnetic wave. Maxwell's theories and contributions are important because the new understanding of light as an electromagnetic transverse wave helped scientists obtain a more precise and accurate value for the speed of light. I talk more about how this is measured in numerous experiments in its own video. The relationship between an oscillating charge and electromagnetic wave production helps scientists produce various types of EM waves, such as radio waves, X-rays, etc. One of these scientists, who was one of Maxwell's students at the time, was Hertz. Hertz conducted an experiment to verify Maxwell's theory. He used an AC power supply to produce an oscillating charge, that is electrons, in a circuit. Due to the high voltage of the circuits, sparks were forming between a discontinuous section of the circuits. And when Hertz moved a simple loop of wire, also with a discontinuous section, close to these sparks, the sparks were also being observed in the loop of wire. Despite the fact that the simple loop of wire was not connected to any potential difference. In this experiment, Hertz produced a radio wave by using the AC supply to generate oscillating electrons. The radio wave was then transmitted from the first loop that had the AC supply to a receiving one, leading to the observation of the sparks. Hertz was also able to calculate the speed of this radio wave by multiplying the frequency of the AC supply used to generate the electrons and the wavelength of the radio wave. He noticed that there were certain positions at which the sparks were not forming in the receiving loop of wire. This corresponded to one of the nodes of the transverse wave. Hertz adjusted the position of this loop to identify the next node, and the next node being the position where, again, there were no sparks being observed. By measuring the distance between the adjacent nodes, he was able to calculate the wavelength of the radio wave. From calculating the speed, Hertz was also able to verify Maxwell's prediction of the speed of electromagnetic waves. This concludes the video on Maxwell's contribution to electromagnetism and the production of EM waves.